Okay, let's take a look at homework six. Um, the first problem was, it was just wanting you to do some research on some discrepancies and floating point numbers and, and how they're handled in, in Python. Uh, things really start going here about problem two. Write a function that accepts a vector of integers and remove repeated values. So there's just one of each one. Uh, the first thing you need to notice is it wants a function. All right, let's jump into R. Um, right here, number two, I'm gonna put it all up here. It's supposed to accept, let's go ahead and make a vector. I'm gonna make a vector and call it A. And to make a vector, we've got to say C. So I'm gonna just make one with, with obvious duplications. There, so I have lots of duplicates. I really should just have six numbers there. Okay, let's set up our function now. I'm gonna call it D, D dupe. It's a function and it's gonna take something. So there we go, we got our, our function started. What we basically have to do, we're gonna have two loops. We're gonna have nested loops, the outside loop the first loop is it's going to be looping through your original vector or um, a. Let's give it a different name besides a. Let's give it x just to show that it's it's being passed to it there. The first thing we need to do is initialize a second vector, and I'm going to call my second vector b, and I'm going to start it off with this. I'm just giving it. Um, the first element of the main vector that was passed to it. So I have my big vector and I've got the beginnings of a second vector and I've just set it to the first value. So I, I know that first number has to be in there. And then I can start my main loop for um, I in, I'm gonna start with one. I'm gonna get the length of X. So it's going to run the entire length of this first vector. And I like that it's putting in my curly braces for me. I'm going to have just a, a variable here called add. And it's just going to be a Boolean. And this is going to tell whether or not to add the next, the next element in the, in the, the input vector into the new vector. Um, so now I need to loop through my new vector for, and I better not make it I, J, N, one, length of, what's my new vector? B. All right, so there's my inside loop. And I need some logic here. If on my new vector for the position that I'm at, if it equals where I'm at with my input vector, we're getting kind of deep with the curly braces here, then add, okay, what have I done here? I'm looping through my inside vector to say, does it match my outside vector? If it does, then don't add it. I'm set my Boolean to false. Okay, I'm gonna come down here. And then I'm gonna say if add. If add is still true, even after it's looped through all that, then I'm gonna say B, and I'm putting together the old B, I'm putting together a vector containing the old B plus X sub I. And then at the end, just for good measure, I'm going to return my new vector. Okay, let's take a look at this sucker and see if it runs. And I'm gonna run it. And let's see what showed up over here. Um, there's A, and there's my dedupe function. Okay, 
So down here, dedupe of A. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's what we were hoping for. Okay, so the trick to that was mainly just that it was a, a nested loop. Um, don't be ashamed if you have to sit and stare at this a few minutes to just work your brain through the logic of what's going on. But once you see it, it's, it, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, um, let's see what's next. Three, create a six by four matrix containing even numbers from two to 48, such that the first row contains two, four, six, eight, we're counting by twos. From that matrix, extract a sub matrix containing the numbers 28, 30, 36, 38. So we've got this funky series out of the middle of it. So let's go ahead and do this first part and create our matrix. And I'm gonna come down here this is number three. I'm going to create a matrix and call it BB. You create a matrix with matrix. And we're going to use sequence. We're going to go from 2 to 48. And we're going to go by twos. Number of rows is six. Number of columns was four. And to make it go across instead of up and down, by row equals true. Either way. Let's see if that did what we wanted it to do run. There it is. It's up here. Let's take a look at it. There we go. 2468 and it is a 4 by 6 matrix. Now it wanted 2830, 3638. So it wants that, that, and that pulled out of this matrix. Okay, so how would we do that? Um, First off, we're going to reference our matrix, and we're going to say, okay, I want rows. The big trick to this is that you really have to call rows first and then columns. Four through six, comma. Let's see what happens if we just do this. Run. Okay, that gave me the call the rows that started 26, 34, and, and 42. So it gave me these bottom three rows that's what i wanted but now i want to select my columns which are really going to be the center two columns so it's going to be two colon three and now let's run this and see if it gives me what i want that's it a two by three column now in the homework if you got that it's flipped around backwards I, I still end up giving you credit for it but that's what we do um, okay, number four required a, let's take a look at it, create a list. Okay, a list, we like lists because it can contain just anything. It can contain, contain other lists, it can contain vectors, it can contain just variables, it can contain anything. So we're going to create a list, and it's going to be called Favorite TV Show. The first element is going to be a title, so that's just a variable. The second element will contain a vector with the names of the main actors. And the third element contain another vector with the number of episodes for each season. Uh, pick a show that's had at least two seasons. Okay, let's see if we can make that. I've already done it just to save some time on this video. Um, and if I could just get to it. There we go. Favorite TV show. And to create it, I called list and then put it in, in parentheses and just started. Single quotes title is MASH, is the name of my show. That is my first element. Separated to the second element with a comma, main characters. Um, it's a vector. We create vectors 
with a, that shouldn't be a equal, that should be a comma, um, with a C. And I've got my list of characters there, comma, number of episodes equals C. And I think I actually took that out and didn't need to. Yeah, what a, let's make this make sense. Main characters equals this, um, you're doing an assignment. All that is goes to that second vector. This is my third vector, number of episodes. So when I put it in, I did have it up here. Favorite TV show, list of three. All right, so if I say favorite TV show, and it is kind enough to suggest it for me. Let's take a look at this. There's my first element, there's my second element, and there's my third element. So it is a list, and I can access these. What did I call it? It's favorite TV show. Let's look at the first element. MASH. What is my second element? That's my uh, people, and then that's my list of episodes, and I can access that now. Easy enough. Okay, let's see what we want. So two ways you can index your list in order to print out the vector of actors. I just showed one right there. I just referenced it by its index number, by number two. Notice that it doesn't start with zero. It starts with one. Okay. When I set this up, you don't have to give it names. I mean, I could have just put that vector there, and then to reference it, I could have just used the index, and that would have been fine. But I did give each one of them, each, each hunk of this, a title. So main character. So I should be able to say favorite TV shows, and you use a dollar sign. When I use a dollar sign, it automatically, our studio has given me some selections here. Main characters. Boom. So there's a second way to reference your main characters. So there's one way, and there's a second way. And what they want next is the name of the third actor on my list. My third actor should be Loretta Swit. So if I say favorite actors, let's see if I give her three, Loretta Swit. So there's the name of my list. There's the element in the list. And then there she is. Now let's, um, I'm trying to get back up to the top. Favorite TV show. We know it's the second element. We know she's the third element in the third in that vector. When I do that, I get a NA that falls apart. To make it work like this, you have to use these double braces. When you use the double braces, it works. And that gave me Loretta Swift. Okay. Use a built-in function to compute the total number of episodes. So what was our total number of episodes? Um, favorite TV show, um, dollar sign, number of episodes. Okay, so I should be able just to say sum of number of episodes, bam, 256. I took that variable and I just stuck it in as an argument to the sum feature, the sum function. Easy enough. <clears throat> Add a fourth element to your list containing a logical variable <coughs> name still produced. That is true if the show is still being produced. Okay. So, favorite TV show You can just give it a new variable. Still produced equals false. It's false. It ended in 1981. Notice favorite TV show just showed up as a list of four. And let's see if we can see it. Yep. Here we go. It, that, that's kind of a neat little feature of our studio. When I clicked on this, it brought it over here and I can see all my stuff. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so that's problem four. Problem five uses a built-in data set called Quakes. 
let's take a look at this guy. I'm going to clean house here real quick. Clean that. Uh, <laughs> nope, number five. If we just do question mark Q A K E S question mark quakes, it's already there and it's nice and handy. Gives it a thousand seismic events of MB greater than four. Okay. If you look right here, it's got a thousand observations on five variables. That's actually your first question. Use quakes to find information how many rows and how many columns well right there we have it we have a thousand and we got five pieces of information for each one okay b show a command that you could use to find the average the mean magnitudes of all the earthquakes the average of the magnitudes deeper than the median depth of all the earthquakes okay so we're really digging for two pieces of information here now let's um Mm -hmm. Oh, I had a couple other things here too. If we do length of quakes, that gives me the size of it. And if I do quakes, give me the rows, that gave me a thousand. That was just another way to find the, the first question. Okay. Quakes. Um, how about if we do head? Head just gives you the first 10 lines. Um, quakes, and I want the magnitude. So if I say I want all the columns, let's see, three, let's see what we got. 500 and these are actually, that's not magnitude, that's depth. We wanted the median depth if we take a look at this. The median depth. Okay, let's take a look at this. Um, I'm going to say QQ. I hit my tab lock. Quakes. So now I have a variable up here that's set to that, and I'm going to use this feature of RStudio where I can click on this, and I can actually take a look at it. 562, 650, 42, 626. This is giving me a way to double check what my what my data is. Am I really pointed to what I think I am? Okay, the third column. Okay. Yeah, this has given me all the rows of the third column, and that's what I'm looking for to begin with. So if I say that I want the, I'm going to put it over here so I can work with it in case I need it again. Median. It'll figure that out for me. Not the mean, but the median of quakes, comma three, that's what we just asked for. And I'm going to boop, run that. I get 247. Now, I don't really know what it is, but just looking through this data, that looks like an, a reasonable number for it to be. How about if we did the mean of quakes, comma, three. That should be fairly close to it. The mean and the median, they don't mean the same thing, but usually they're going to be fairly close to each other, and these are, so that's okay. Okay. That's got the first hunk of it. We, we figured out how to find the median. Um, if we say quakes, I'm referencing the table, and the columns that I want are that boop 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 that's not what I meant to do I want to find them where is greater than the 
the median. Median's a function. And what this should do is build a mask for me. I got comma three. Boop, 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 boom. Oh, it fell the second time, too. I've got quakes in there too many times. There. I'm looking for quakes. This is going to give me um yeah it's going to give me all the columns we're still just talking about the third column where the the value in there is greater than the median of this and this makes sense now too because it should be a mask of trues and false because if it's the median then about half of them are going to be true and about half of them are going to be false and that just from eyeballing there it looks like that makes sense Okay, let's pull this out now. Quakes. Again, that third column is what we're wanting. Okay. Comma three. and say, okay, I just want the third column. Okay, we know that some of these values, they got down into the single digits. These are all in the triple digits. So these all look like that they should be bigger than the median. We still, the, the median wound up being what in the top high 200s low 300s so these all look like they're bigger than that so that's given us the values in that third column um, so that gives us what we want in that column okay this next one should be easy I've got this what we want to average was not in that column it was in a different column it was actually in the fourth column. The fourth column was the magnitude. So we're getting the right depth, but now we're pulling the data out of the magnitude column. So the magnitude should all be well, three, fours, fives. Yeah. So there's my magnitudes. And once we're there, all it asked for was the average of that. So the mean I will cut and paste that there we go so that would be the average magnitude of all the earthquakes that occurred deeper than the median okay that's another one you may need to go back and look at a couple of times but we got through it um, how does the average magnitude of the deep earthquakes from the previous part compare to the magnitude of the shallow earthquakes, the ones that are um, shallower than what we had? So right there, 4.52. All we'd have to do, and I think I can just do it right here, is switch my sign, and that would give me all the ones that are less. How about I get an average of those? Looks like about 0.2 difference. 
And that's reasonable. That that sounds like something that makes some sense. And we could we could actually go to the trouble of subtracting those if we wanted to, but that's that's got pretty well what we wanted. So the command that you would use to get the rows with the smallest value in the depth column. Okay, we've been working with the depth column, so we should be okay with this. To get the depth column, quakes, comma three. Run, there we go, there's our depth column. How do we find the minimum of that? There is a min function, quakes, comma, three. So let's find out what we get. It's 40. That's easy enough. Um, show the command you to get, get the rows. You can tell this S is in there intentionally. The rows with the smallest value. The point is there could be more than one row Okay. Let's start up here. I'm going to say quakes. Okay, what rows do I want? I want the ones quakes. This is going to be my mask, comma three, where whichever value equals the minimum of quakes comma three. So if that value is equal to the minimum, and I'm gonna put a comma right here, and this will tell me that I want all of the columns. This is my column right here. All right, let's run this. Bloop. There we go. So depth should be 40 on all those. That's the big thing that we're looking for. All right, there we go. The last one. So the command you to create a new data frame called Quakes Sorted that stores the data in order sorted by depth. Quakes Sorted. Quakes. There's a function called order. Quakes depth. And in this case, I'm not going to use this just to show that instead of using its index, I'm actually going to use its title. And I want all my rows. There we go. So now I've got a new thousand observations. Let's take a look at this one. It should start off where we sorted by three, my magnet by depth. And we can see it's increasing as I go through. Okay. Um, a lot of this, like I say, you, you'll need to go back and, and work through it and get it to make sense, but it all does eventually make sense. And it just, it just takes some practice. All righty. Thank you.